Welcome to the Kyperian Commentary Podcast. This is episode 130. And with us today, I have uh, Dr. Gordon Wilson. Uh, if you don't know who Gordon Wilson is, uh, you might not have heard of him. He's got a slightly lesser famous brother named Douglas, but uh, Gordon uh, teaches science at New St. Andrews. Uh, he used to teach at Liberty University years ago when I was a student at Liberty. He was my apologetics professor uh, and also founded our church here in Lynchburg, Virginia. So uh, I wanted to have Gordon on uh, because he is involved in tons of different things. Uh, it seems like he has a lot going on. And one of the things we we talk about often on the Kyperian Commentary podcast, we talk theology, we talk politics, uh, but we want to talk about the Lordship of Christ in all areas of life. So sometimes we'll talk about art. Uh, Gordon is here to talk to us about science today. Gordon, welcome to the Kyperian Commentary Podcast. Thank you, Rick, for having me. It is great to be here. So I wanted to to kind of get your uh, perspective. You're involved in, in a lot of creation science sort of stuff, and I've seen a lot of change in that field over my lifetime. I remember in the 1990s in church, you know, we'd watch the Kent Hovind videos and things like that. And it seemed like the the creationist position was extremely fringe at the time. I think it still is a little fringe in the mind of mainstream scientists, but right. there's a much bigger public presence now. It's not Ken Ham and Kent Hovind with videos. It's an entire industry with, you know, we have the Ark Encounter, we have the Creation Museum. Tell me how right. you've seen that change over the years and what you think the current status of creation science is. Well, I, I see the same thing. It's um, it's still fringe as far as mainstream. We are definitely heretics um, when you, uh, from the perspective of the secular scientific academy we're flaming heretics but um it is gaining momentum like you said with the ark encounter the creation museum a number of uh periodicals both peer-reviewed as well as popular um it's just and then there's uh, it's genesis history uh movie documentary that came out uh it's just getting a lot more um uh it's yeast in the loaf yeast and loaf uh, and it's becoming more well known it's it's also um riding alongside the intelligent design movement which is distinct there can be overlap there can be some cre uh, creationists young earth creationists in the intelligent design movement but it is not the same thing and um a lot of people i think the lay community needs to they might know there's a difference, but uh, just to articulate it, um, the intelligent design movement, and I'm not critiquing it it's right now, I'm just saying that it is only saying that uh, uh, intelligence was involved in the formation of the universe and life. And it doesn't make any um, claims as to the veracity of holy scriptures or any special revelation it's just saying through um through the uh, objective scientific analysis of the general revelation we can we can discern we can um uh, we can induce or deduce I'm not sure uh, uh, that there was an intelligence involved in the creation of everything um right but it doesn't and, make any claims as to who that um, intelligent designer was. So to it's, be, it's a, it's, to be it's clear a about commitment. that, if I could just interrupt quickly, um, that doesn't make you any more acceptable in the eyes of the scientific right. mainstream either. Right, right. <laughs> so yeah, I've read they, Michael Behe, and he basically gives away the farm, except for God was probably involved somehow. And when right. you read reviews of his stuff, he's they they put him right in with Ken Ham and answers in Genesis. Yeah, they they do. They they want to marginalize the whole nine yards. They do not want to give an inch. Uh, now the ID people are trying to appeal to um, just the scientific data, mm -hmm. and to I think their strategy is just to. Uh, call them intelligent design creationists and just um, kind of 
lump them all together. Um, but I would say they are getting a, a bigger hearing from people that are more on the, like, uh, people that uh, are dubious about young earth creationists uh, or saying that's just too, too fringe. Um, but they'll read books like uh, by Stephen Meyer and Behe. And I, I'd say they would have a, in a lot of ways a, in the intelligentsia of, of people that are of faith, they have a bigger falling. I, I don't know the stats as far as who, who has a bigger following, but I know that's the idea appeal is to try to only use general revelation and not make any claims. Um, but you've got those two streams of thought. And um, I think it's just gaining. I hope in my lifetime that we see Darwinism come crashing down. We've, we've got the data to bury it a hundred times over. Um, the problem is not that we need another uh, amazing argument. What we need is uh, kind of like paradigm shifts. You just wait mm -hmm. for uh, who was it that said it, science advances one funeral at a time. You uh, sort of right. you wait for the old guard, the staunch um, Darwinist to uh, die, um, and the people that are coming up, the new guys, don't have 40, 50 years of their ego invested in the theory and they're a little bit more open um to hearing the arguments so it may be a it may be a slow transition um i'm hoping it's it's a a, a more sudden transition uh i do sort of want i i i i want a Heyman moment mm. if you know what i mean <laughs> the Heyman, the Heyman right. moment is where you know when every all the tables turn all at once, and Haman, who thinks he's on the rise, and um, has won the favor of Queen Esther, and all of a sudden uh, he's accused of <laughs> trying to do genocide against the Jews, and he goes, "I can see his face going white as a right. sheet <laughs> before it's Anyone's... been uh, covered over by the sack, and he's hauled off to the gallows he's built." Um, for Mordecai, I sort of want a Haman moment for the 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 whole scientific community. Right. Um, I don't know what that will mean, but it may be a gradual thing um, mm -hmm. where they can sort of save face slowly. Um, but well, when you when you look at you know, I've just read a little bit about this, but the history of how Darwinism became accepted. Um, it was really accepted before people started looking for evidence of it. You know, Darwin wrote his book and that was basically the, the foundation and the romantics <laughs> jumped right on board with it right away because they already thought the sublime in nature and we are all part of the cycle of life. And, and it was sort of in keeping with the spirit of the age and not really that there was all this rigorous scientific evidence. It was like you said, a paradigm shift. People there was were ready for that to happen. And, and the scientific and the scientific revolution, all of that, where man's reason was exalted above revelation, right? Um, and so the Bible was useful for keeping uh, sort of a moral guidebook, but uh, it's the we can't the, the whole uh, back then in the nineteenth century there was just so much looking to science for truth and mm -hmm. more and more of the scientists were becoming the high priests of truth rather than uh, revelation so um it's a it's it's advancing and uh right now the state of creation i think a lot of lay people don't know the details but there's there's intramural even among creationists there's intramural differences and um one of the chapters in my book addresses some of the is more pastoral um uh, just trying to uh, help creationists um uh, 
not get so uh, angsty at each other because and so there's these these differences of opinion and it you know um, you almost have to be initiated into um, be a creationist geek and really be into all of the the differences to see the tensions rising it's you see parallels in denominations where <clears throat> right is is there some uh, um i mean obviously there's going to be intramural conflict is right. do you say do you think there's an overall attitude charles spurgeon once said um it's our concern to win win souls to christ and later we'll have time to win them for our own particular folds do you see a, a similar attitude in the creation community where we want you to believe the Bible and be a creationist later, we can debate all the other details or, or is it, is, is there really some tension where we, we have, the I right think there's, approach and that's, that's it. I think there's some uh, lines. <laughs> I think a lot of creationists in different organizations get along with each other. Yeah. And just like there's, people in different denominations that get along with each other. And I think it's more of a function of walking in the light. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're really about just what's, what's uh, my opinion is right about X, Y, and Z. And this person over here disagrees with what I think. Um, then there's that partisan spirit that, that partisan spirit that says um, they're they're outside, the, they're not necessarily saying they're outside the fold of Christianity. But I'm not going to extend the right hand of fellowship because they're wrong on right. you know X, Y, and Z. And um, and so I'm uh, you know I have opinions. I'm not saying drop your opinions. I think uh, different organizations um, will have different intramural uh, <laughs> perspectives on um, things that you know on the geologic column for example um, uh, for for a long time uh, a lot of creationists would say that the uh, flood post flood boundary in the geologic strata is uh, between the Cretaceous and the tertiary called the KT boundary and other creationists are saying, no, there's evidence that uh, well into the tertiary or most of the Cenozoic, which would include the ter uh, uh, tertiary and quaternary, um, is flood deposits. So I'm not weighing in one way or the other. Um, but I think that in differences like, uh, or examples like uh, did, um, did whales uh, change or metamorphose from a land creature um and you have these different uh creationists who are saying you know that's that's crazy talk and i personally think it is crazy talk but they're calling them young earth evolutionists saying hmm. you're saying that some land animal transformed into a whale and the reason is is because you don't see whale fossils in the mesozoic or the age of the dinosaurs mm -hmm. And so they're thinking, well, maybe God created the genetic potential in um, in these these land loving creatures that um, through a change in the uh, environment, um, it 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 um, uh, did some gene regulation and uh, expressed some genetic potential that was written in the genome, and then they transferred. So. But there's these sort of name calling uh, where it's like young earth evolutionists and those guys that think that, that don't think of themselves as evolutionists because they don't think it was random. They don't think it was natural selection that so, uh, changed. They say creatures. that. Are, are they saying that that, that there's um, some sort of previous land mammal? that was the same barrenman or the same kind yep. as the whale. Same, like same kind of They haven't kind evolved that, into a different kind. But right, but they the transformed ah. uh, They transformed in a wild way hmm. um, into a sea creature, but it wasn't a random event, um, hmm. and it was more of a developmental um, uh, phenotype. 
the biologists would say phenotypic plasticity, where you're, uh, you can see that in just the development of a tadpole, you have a radical transformation or a butterfly from a caterpillar. You have a radical transformation. Nobody calls that evolution. Mm -hmm. You have a tadpole genome and the frog genome. They're the exact same genome, but the, <laughs> there's a completely different uh, suite of characters that are turned on and another suite that are turned off that transforms this thing. And so I'm not, I'm not arguing for or against that. I, I do have a problem with it for other reasons, but the point is rather than um, getting really, really um, name calling and right. saying, we can hold these differences and then come together and say, what are your, why do you think what you think um, and, and, and look at the data and hash things out in the spirit of uh, brotherly love? You know, it right. doesn't mean it doesn't matter. It could matter very much, uh, but we, we need to, I mean, creationism is very, very small, right. even as it's growing, it's still small. And when we fracture, like, um, you know, how micro, micro brews, well, there's micro Presbyterian, you know, right. where you just split and split and split and split until you have these tiny, tiny denominations. And you just, the creation movement needs to hash out their differences in a spirit of brotherly love. And there you have it. Right. Yes, I have opinions on these matters, and I would side with one or the other, but I wouldn't side with their, um, with a a spirit of ill, ill will, and and that's where I'm. I would would try to tell the creationists get a, get along with each other, and yeah, vehemently argue for your point, but don't don't try to uh, push them away. Um, and I, I just don't think that's helpful in the long run. Right. Uh, this would be a good time for a transition too. So for those who are sure. watching or listening, the, the book that Gordon's talking about is called Darwin's Sandcastle. He published it a few months ago. Oh, there it is right there. Uh, published like last November-ish. Um, actually, we had a, a pre-release back in August for Grace Agenda. But okay. then, uh, then we um, did a some added some things um, as far <laughs> as like blurbs and um, an index and um, a, a forward and endorsements and stuff like that. So the the first one that came, but then the the full edition came out in October for Fight Laugh Feast. It's okay, a so Roman road. Roman Rhodes published it. Yeah, so to so this book, um, you have a chapter that we've been talking about, sort of pastoral, about how we're all on the same yeah. team here. Let's act like teammates and get along, even though right. differences. Um, who is the book geared toward? So would you say it's a, it's a book for people who are already, we're convinced creationists and we're, we're reading it? Um, well, or, um, or are you, or is it an apologetic tool? Would you say for it? it it's people? I think written primarily for uh, Christians who might uh, that are maybe wobbly mm -hmm. on the area of well, are is theistic evolution right or um progressive creation some sort of compromise what i would say compromise between old earth type mentality where right. uh, old earth came before darwin i mean lyle um james hutton has really uh, convinced the church way way earlier um at least 50 years uh prior to darwin that you know it was old and flood geology was shelved. And so I would say that the church today is even more catechized down to the bone that things are old. Yeah. Um, I mean, some are obviously young earth creationists have been convinced otherwise, but 
I'd say there's there's this it's really, really hard to switch to the young earth because a lot of people just in their gut feel like I'm becoming a flat earther or someone who, you know, is a member of the alien uh, uh, survivor uh, abduction network. Right. Or, yeah. Uh, oh, is that alien a- abduction survivor network? They, they're, 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 um, they don't want to be that, you know, thought of as really, really crazy, wild eyed. Um, well, and the, and the fact and so, that over like the last 15 years, flat earth has gone from being a joke people tell to there are actually a growing number of people who I, want to be flat earthers and say, what's well, because the Bible says, you know, yeah, yeah. And that's to be a that's, creationist, doesn't it? Right. And so, you know, uh, the, we do not want that to, to young earth creationists right. to have that kind of um, mm-hmm. uh vibe and i think a lot of people are just afraid not because of the data but because they just don't want to be thought of as a weirdo um an anti-intellectual right. person so um the book is written for someone who's maybe confused on the issue they say why do, it doesn't really matter whether we evolved or whether the earth is old or young or what who cares you know they uh, those people i think that's the the um the audience that I'm looking to reach, also the people that are well on my, you know, fully on my page, they agree, but they don't know why they agree or they really haven't thought through the issues. I want them to think through the issues. Mm-hmm. I'm not, uh, as one one of the people who endorsed the book said, I'm not uh, so much trying to tell you what to think as to how to think. And I, I want people to think through these issues um that are important and the 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 authority of the word of god uh is important and words mean things and um that uh old earth uh, or theistic evolutionist really has um very damaging uh effects on uh your the- theology it just is not something that is even tenable theologically if we want to take um uh if we believe that death is a consequence of sin then it's just really hard and it's it's illogical to hold that there's millions of years of death prior to the fall right uh, so, so it seems like this book did kind of grow out of a pastoral concern then more than anything else. I mean, it's, it's, it's a little different from what you've done before. You did a biology textbook, you've done right. nature videos, which we might talk about in a minute. Uh, you've done a book on conservationism for Christians, Christian conservationism. You've done research into herpetology, reptiles. Uh, so th- this is right. a little bit of a departure from, you yeah. know, past it's, you it's less apologetic into the apologetic side and more in the let's explain creation and, and get people excited yeah. about it side of things. Right. I, I suppose it could be apologetic for a non-believer who's open-minded, but generally um, right. they probably wouldn't pick up a book like this because it's assuming that um, you believe that um, the word of God has authority. Right. But I do get into, I mean, some of the chapters are more <laughs> intelligent design. Like I do, uh, distill Behe's thesis on one chapter mm-hmm. yeah. called Designer um, uh, Micro Machines. And so there there are certain books that I try to distill. Some are Young Earth, some are Intelligent Design. And I just kind of uh, try to distill the most salient points in those books and make yeah. it um, more understandable to the layperson. It's, uh, I think it's accessible to the light person. We get into some details, but I think it's, it's understandable. Um, Good stuff. So let's, so, let's talk about a little bit um, about uh, your nature videos before we run out of time here. Uh, you've done multiple, you've done two so far of the uh, right in the dance right in the dance yeah my brain was dying on me for some reason you did right in the dance earth right in the dance water uh, i was expecting right in the dance air or sky or heavens but 
but we, right. you know, I guess you couldn't find any cherubim or anything like that to right. put on video. Uh, but it's right in the dance. Africa is the one that's coming out. Um, and and now little, it's going to be yeah, go smaller, ahead. smaller episodes. So before the first two were hour and a half or so, full, full feature length. And um, the Africa will be at least starting two episodes um, that are more just a little over 30 minutes mm -hmm. each. So, um, yeah, that's and, what and we filmed in 2020. Where can where can people watch it? Is it? Well, we have it hasn't been released yet. We I don't have a right. I, I can't promise. Uh, any release date at yeah. this time um right that's sort of up to angel studios right that's what i was going to say as far as venue it's it's going to be on vid angel right uh angel studios angel studios okay there's a distinction there they, I, i'm not yeah i think there's same a, company different okay well yeah it's i don't know if it's the same company anymore. okay interesting yeah i, I yeah. didn't know one way or the other about that so angel studios they're they're making content and and yeah. you guys are, are picked up for that. So tell me a little bit yeah. about the mindset behind the the ride and the dance. Um, I've been asked well, by a again, couple of people about it. Like, what what's it about? So this would be good. Yeah, it's, you know, uh, <laughs> one of our first subtitles was a cinematic celebration of creation. So a lot of times um, nature videos that are produced by <clears throat> Christians are sort of an apologetic tool mm -hmm. showing that, well, see nature and see the design in nature and obviously this couldn't evolve and so there's some sort of an apologetic argument and i think a lot of people use nature as an apologetics tool and only an apologetics tool and we're basically saying no there's this huge huge audience out there that doesn't need to be convinced right <laughs> they do not need to be convinced <clears throat> that god is the creator um, it's like it's like so going to a church here, that does the Romans Road every Sunday, right? Pardon? It's like going to a church that does the Romans Road every Sunday, right? right. Like every Sunday, saved. it's like okay, we're all saved. I'm, we're all saved. You don't need to have an a, yeah right. an invitation. Although if somebody's here, they've got a little bit of gospel, but we're assuming <clears throat> we are assuming that God created. <clears throat> excuse me, and. Uh, we want to celebrate that and to just extol the glories of God in the creation and um, assume like Attenborough in BBC, he assumes evolution. He doesn't try to prove it. He assumes it. We are assuming creation. We're not trying to prove the existence of God. Now, if somebody's watching and they go, yeah, wow, that is, I mean, it could it could serve an apologetic purpose, but that's not our thrust. Um, we, we just want to glorify God like the psalmist did in Psalm 104, um, that God provides food for people. He provides food for uh, nature and habitat. And we just want to extol um, the glory of God in, and uh, that nature declares the glories of God. I'm looking forward to seeing the new episodes. So we'll have to Good. make sure we have I'm, Angel Studios before that time comes. Uh, Gordon, yeah, just for... a couple of days ago, I um, did some voiceover for Riot in the Dance Africa. Oh so we're, well, we're on it. Coming in and talking to me uh, today on the Kyperian Commentary Podcast. They're about You're to kick welcome. us out in a couple of minutes. So I need to <laughs> wrap it up. But yeah, yeah. I'd love to uh, have you back sometime after the Riot in the Dance comes out, maybe, and we can. We can talk about that it some be more. Great. Um, thank you all for watching. I'm going to put a link to Dr. Wilson's book in the description of the video. And I also put a link to the trailer for Ride and the Dance Africa. So you can go watch it. Thanks everyone for watching today.